Good afternoon, listeners. I'm calling you listeners, even though I am going to have, I am showing video. I do have a video track, but it's all stills. It's kind of a slideshow style, and I'm going through my Flickr photo stream, which is public. And I will put a link to it in the description so you can look at these. However, they won't start. I'll put a, a link to the first slide that I'm showing, actually, so you can go back in the timeline. I say timeline because I think that's an important aspect of Bucky Fuller's thinking and others going forward. The idea of a time tunnel, a scenario, a world line. These aren't ridiculous ideas. These are intelligent ideas that we each live in a time tunnel and that these are partially overlapping. Now this first picture, it shows a UN flag and a fuller projection juxtaposed. And I think of that as like flavors of globalism. In the United Nations, we think of small world after all kind of nations all getting along in theory, ideally, right? We've banned nuclear weapons. We're looking back on those kind of savage times. That's where we're heading, we hope. But then the fuller projection is more like we're not taking these nations seriously enough to have to show you them. We're into global warming now. We're talking about the temperature. That's what the coloring is about. And actually, when you go back to the UN map, you see it doesn't really show nations either. It's not really an emblem of world government, but it almost looks that way with the Roman-esque I don't know, there's something about the Roman mindset that creeps through for me in the UN flag. But that's not a criticism so much as an acknowledgement of how world government does still appeal to some people as a remnant of imperial thinking. And then there's a fighting Quaker guy, and then there's something I was using to explain quad rays. So we just had a Math for Wisdom seminar workshop here, here in Portland, and it was mostly so that we could understand better where Andreas is coming from, Andreas, with his wondrous wisdom. So he has a whole channel on this and a wiki and all this stuff. By the way, as I talk here, some new pictures I haven't seen until recently, uh, came through from Ellen Thomas, a long-time Women's International League for Peace and Freedom activist who knew my mom quite well. They traveled the country. Mom was post her accident in the year 2000 when I didn't think she'd want to get into a van again after their head-on collision on their way to Bloemfontein from Maseru in Lesotho. So this is from having lunch with my Uncle Bill. We got up to see relatives. I dropped Andreas off to see his sister, whereas I continued north. And I was gifted with some suspenders. Instead of a belt, I'm going to finally try the suspender route. I'm going back in hopes of finding this buckyball, which I'm going to pause at. Although I, I also like the... Uh, Electric Mustang is a great picture. Buckyball, that is also a radome, a weather station. In the next, what's what's it called again? I have, let's just go, let's go back to where we're looking at the photo stream as a whole. I have some links for Seattle Center as well here. Or some pictures, I should say. There's Andreas with his sister. So anyway, he's here from Lithuania and has his own channel. And it's really quite, there we go, it's really quite um, elaborate in the cognitive framework that he's deriving for us. And I want to end here on a talk about the two kinds of Tunis and say that this relates to the whole idea of psychologizing in math or taking these intuitive leaps that aren't simply deductive. In other words, we are creating, you could say, a memory palace or a mnemonic web, something associative, something semantic, something network-like, 
that helps us raise our concepts in relation to one another, kind of like as if they connected around in a surface like this dome, a manifold. This dome, it's not a dome, this sphere, you could say. I mean, it is a dome. It's got a flat bottom, you could say, here. So, okay, we'll call it a dome. We'll call it a sphere. Um, it's got weather equipment, detecting equipment internally, right? So these are, these are a more modern iteration of something that Fuller himself was a lot involved in back in the early days of the dew line, defense early warning system, right? There was a whole bunch of, um, these were for detecting of missiles incoming or overflights, whatever. They were focused on air traffic, but we still have a need to focus on weather, air traffic, everything goes on in the sky. I mean, radars aren't that selective in what they can see and not see. So if there's UFOs out there, we can probably see those as well, right? So I have a whole page actually mentioning this particular uh, weather station, which I link to somewhere. Maybe, let me see, next door. Do I link to it? Weather station, not from Flickr. All right, we won't bother to go there right now. Let me talk about the two kinds of Tunis and wrap it up here. So when you just see this ball, you can think of it how growing and shrinking, there's a kind of two times something to the second power. This something would be like the frequency, the scale factor. And second power refers to area or the fact that it's ball shaped. We're talking about the surface. I'm talking about a formula in synergetics that's like two times some low number or prime number number, like two times a constant made of prime numbers we're reminded of it. All, all numbers go down to primes, some integer, right, positive, two times a bunch of primes times frequency to the second power plus two. And the two kinds of tunis here are the tunis of concavity, convexity, where things grow, shrink as a second power. As this ball gets bigger, smaller, there's a second powering going on. There's a doubling. There's the concave, convex, convex aspect of it. And in terms of what Andreas is coming across, I'd say being versus non-being in the sense of existing or not, it's like just to tune it in at all is to get that sense of a thing, which is to get that sense of an inside-outside, something that has existence. And we'll just say it's a ball, but we don't know what it is, right? We haven't really tuned it in. We don't have the details. But as you tune it in, then there's that plus two. Because two prime number after the second power plus two is supposed to give us the sum of all the balls in the outer layer. In other words, this formula in synergetics that Fuller is talking about is about the sum of the balls in the outer layer. And what we're talking about is tuning in some entity and at first just being aware that it's there. And that's like take it or leave it, the way I think of Pascal's triangle. But once we decide to really tune it in, then we become aware of polarity, we become aware of spin, we become aware of its equators, its geodesics. We tune it in as a planet, as an experience, as a coherent whole, a whole of some kind, a system. So that's the other kind of tunus. You kind of get the plus two kind of tunus when you've agreed to go beyond just tuning in that there's something there where you have concavity. Okay, there's a concavity there. There's some grain of sand. But until I like zoom in on it, I'm not going to get much else. So there's kind of take it or leave it. And then there's choice and getting involved, you could say, a gravity well. If you decide to really visit and stay there for a while, you know, like putting into a port. Or if you're on Star Trek, actually landing on the planet. Maybe obeying the prime directive, maybe not so much. Anyway, it's up to you, the choices you make. All right, good talking. We'll talk again.